Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. Well, being forced to drive an old Mercedes while your Cadillac is stuck on the lift is pure torture, but I think we'll survive somehow. So stick around. In this episode, we're going to reinstall the differential carrier in our old Coupe de Ville, set the backlash, and hopefully get our tooth pattern just right. <laughs> Welcome back. We've taken the differential carrier and the ring gear and we've cleaned them really well with mineral spirits and it's got a, a coat of uh, gear oil all over it to uh, keep everything uh, corrosion free. Uh, I've got our parts assembled here. Here's our crossbar, our roll pin. We've got our gears, our pinion gears and our side gears. So we are now ready to reassemble our carrier so let's go ahead and start with the side gears first driver's side all right so the ring gear bolts here the gears point that way that's passenger that's driver and the thrust washer is already on there so we'll place this gingerly into place Ooh, that's nice all right, let's do the passenger side. It'd be super duper fantastic if the vacuum set up by the oil would um, keep it in place while I put the other gear in. So anyway, uh, let me pre-stage these others. I marked these, let's see, that says upper. So that means it goes there because upper Upper, it would be like this, upper is that way, so that's upper. <laughs> so we'll get the upper out of the bag. Get the lower out of the bag, for lack of a better word, you know, I just, it's just my words for it. Thrust washers in place. All right, let's go ahead and put the uh, passenger side in, and again, our I'm just doing this as a mental check. We, our thrust washer is right there. So that will go in place like, man, that, that oil, really, look at that, it just stays there. Even though the surface is, is kind of like a, a tapered connection on the drill press, a tapered bore, I think it is. Anyway, I'm digressing again. Okay, upper, upper being that way, so disregard my logic, it's, it'll be okay. And what you do is you, you see it slipped down once I started messing around with it. There we go. You put put one in that window like that. That winder, it's got winders in it. And then you put one in this winder back here. Hopefully. And then the idea is that we simply rotate this around, keeping the Thrust washer centered. All right, let's move back. That one got off. That one got off kilter. Can't have that. Come on, you can do it. Get in there. There we go. Just making sure my thrust washers are in place properly. You know what I'm saying? That was easy. Okay. All right. So apparently there's actually a factory tool that you shove through here and you make sure this is all aligned perfectly before you uh, put this cross shaft in there. But we don't have that. So we're going to do it. Now that's interesting. I got it on the wrong teeth. So if I move it this way, my hole's not right. If I move it this way, my hole's not right. My pinion, <laughs> that's, kind of, that's pretty comical. My pinion bearings are not directly across from one another. So I made a mistake. Let me correct that. See there, that's what happens when you've never done something before. Yep, that one's off. See, this one's straight, but this one back here is like cocked off to one side. All right, so let's fix that. 
I wasn't thinking. All right, now that, yeah, that's straight. That should work. See there, I learned something. Look at that. Thrust washer came off. Got to fix that. All right, let's try again. There we go. Yeah, now we're all, we should be aligned. There we go. Man, he's getting these thrust washers in here is a challenge. Let me tell you what, that fell out. I'm gonna try again. Yeah, boy. Oh, you know what I should do? I should just leave the crush washers, crush washers, thrust washers. I wonder if we could just leave them kind of sucked into the side, you know? I wonder if that would work. Let's try that. That one fell down. Let me get a finger on it. I need a third hand. Let's see. Now I'm, I'm holding my thrust washers with my pinkies. <laughs> and let's see what happens when I try to do this. And I'm going to use my thumb and my middle finger to uh, try to move things. Now i got to move my pinkies out of the way. Did I mention that I can actually walk down the street and chew bubble gum at the same time? How about that? I believe we are looking good. So let's go ahead and get this cross shaft in there. All right, little oil on there. All right, we need a piece of wood. Ah, that was easy. All right, let's, uh, we gotta line up our roll pin. Line up the roll pin hole. I dare say that's good enough, which means I'll tap it again. It's all the way through, so we shouldn't have any problems with that. All right, so the uh, good old Cadillac manual says install guide pins to guide your ring gear onto the carrier. Uh, so I know that the generally uh, the ring gear is heated and it expands a little and you slip it on there and you bolt it in place. Well, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it the way the book says. The book says, use your Cadillac guide pins and uh, screw them into the uh, ring gear. I have two of them right here. Uh, and then you, when you slip it down on there, these things go into the holes and guide you into place so that all your holes line up. Clearly, the, these things are made out of unobtainium, so I uh, reluctantly uh, cut the heads off two of these uh, ARP ring gear bolts, reverse thread, 17 by 20, and I went and bought uh, some 3 8 inch rod at the local big box and uh, welded that to it. And lo and behold, you have your factory service manual guide pins with uh, 7 16 by 20 reverse threads. Anyway, made two of them. I think the book said use three. Didn't really see the need for three. Gonna try it with two, see how it goes. Uh, so having said all that, I need to figure out where my alignment is to get the ring gear back on to this in the correct way. And as you recall in a previous video, we just simply looked at the part number on the carrier housing, which was right here. Part number is, part number is right there, so. That is between those two guys right there. And then that lines up with the 293 mark on the ring gear, which is right there. So that means that these two holes here will go into those two holes there. And then you're back to where you uh, originally started. All right, let's go ahead and uh, install our new uh, guide pins here. We're going to put this one here next to the 293 verbiage on the uh, gear and this one will go on the opposite corner 
All right. Make sure we do it right. It's not square. Must be square. All right, factory service manual says tap it on with a rubber mallet. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, this may, in fact, either prove me right or completely negate everything I just said about not wanting to heat my ring gear. That ain't, that ain't going to work no more than a man in the moon. All right, we're going to modify the procedure a little bit. All right, we got ourselves some four by four action going on here. This might do the trick. All right, I uh, cut the scene there and this is kind of a touchy process. And, uh, but you know, I've been banging on this thing for several minutes now and been making some progress finally. Yeah, we're coming on down now. Kind of makes me wonder whether or not I couldn't just Put the bolts in it and draw the ring gear on with the bolts but there's probably some differential guys out there in differential land that are like either crying or laughing right now i don't know which but they're doing one of them too all right i'm gonna keep on whopping on my diff here and then i'll uh, be right back our alignment pins are moving freely so that's a good sign that means we should be aligned so let's try to put a bolt in before we go any further. Yep, that one lines up. We're almost down, folks. We're almost down. The rag is to keep the sawdust out of my differential. <laughs> and I believe that's it, really. All right, let's flip it over and put some bolts in it. All right, let's go ahead and get our uh, bolts back in. it's time to press on our side bearings and this seems to be going along actually fairly well I'm just using a, uh, a properly sized aluminum bearing installation tool upside down and pressing only on the inner race And we'll go all the way down until it stops and then we'll move on to the other side and then I think we might be ready to reinstall our carrier into the car all right I think we're just about ready to uh, reassemble our differential here so we've got the completed carrier assembly I put some plastic around it just to keep the dust out of it because you know don't want any contamination got all the parts cleaned up with mineral spirits and have a just I put a light coating of oil on everything because this has been stuff's been sitting out on the on the bench for several days. Our newly made uh, test equipment here, the little hold down bracket and stuff for the dial indicator, we'll uh, test the uh, the uh, bearing cap spread with that later on. Got a new set of uh, pinion bolts from McMaster Car. Uh, of course, we have the new bearings on the carrier itself, and we have the. Uh, new bearing races there's a little bit wider one that goes on the driver's side that is an lm 104911a and here is the shim that came off of the car don't know what the thickness is it's about an eighth somewhere in that neighborhood and here is the standard uh, bearing race it's an lm uh, 104911 and here's our tool we made to uh, adjust uh, this nut here which goes on the right hand side and we have a, a socket wrench for our pinion bolts and a flashlight and a cup of tea and some cleaner. I think we're about ready to uh, get started. So uh, let's get busy. All right. I tried to wait until Rick was done blowing leaves, but this is Saturday and you know how that goes. So we've got to get this thing done. Let's go ahead and get this uh, gear carrier installed. And yes, it's heavy. All right. Clearly, I'm going to have to hold that because it's, it's going to try to come out on you. She spins. 
friends. How about that? All right, we're gonna get our uh, adjustment nut installed next. I'm not sure how we're gonna get that accomplished. I have to keep pressure on the top of the ring gear back this way because the taper of the bearings wants to push the um, race off to the right. So we need to get this uh, adjustment nut embedded into the threads. Make sure it spins freely, which if it was cross-threaded, it certainly wouldn't. <laughs> All right, let's get our bearing cap on here. What you want to do is make sure that the uh, adjustment nut is properly engaged in the threads in the housing and properly engaged in the threads on the bearing cap. It looks like it's straight to me, so I think I can go ahead and run these bolts on down all right let's make sure we can turn our adjustment nut all right that was a fiddle faff so uh you know you get your adjustment nut down into the threads squarely and then make sure it turns freely and then get the bearing cap over the top of it make sure the bearing cap threads align with the threads in the housing Easier said than done. Had to work with it for a little while. The adjustment nut moves freely now. Up next, we're going to put the uh, left side bearing cap on. Loosely. All right, up next, we've got to slide this whole affair to the right so that we can get the shim on the left side of this driver's side bearing race. All right, so I've got to uh, loosen this uh, adjustment nut uh, probably about halfway out so that I can move this whole affair over and this uh, bearing cap. You see, I've moved it out some. I've got a gap right there now. The next step is to install uh, the backlash shim uh, chamfered side that way. So it will go right there. All right, you can see we've got it moved over that way some. So we now have enough room to slip our shim in, thankfully. There we go. All right, let's install our left-hand side bearing cap. All right, we're gonna tighten our right hand uh, bearing cap down to 50 foot pounds. We'll just sneak up on it. All right, let's go ahead and reinstall the pinion. And you saw me pull it out in a previous video, so not a huge deal. Just gotta get the uh, center embedded into the uh, straddle bearing. Of course, we're going to use our alignment pins, which are basically 3 8 inch bolts. If the pinion depth does need to be decreased, that means a shorter shim or thinner shim should be used. In that case, I don't have one. I'd have to uh, trim this one down with the sanding disc, probably. <laughs> uh, if we need to bring the pinion out, I do have a brand new, new old stock uh, 6 thou. Uh, shim that I was luckily I found on the internet so uh, we got that kind of covered maybe uh, but we're going to hope the pinion depth was set correctly from the factory anyway so you know fingers crossed all right after about three hours of head scratching <laughs> I could not get this uh, pinion housing fully seated and get it to mesh and every time I did I, this would not turn, it would completely bound up. I thought to myself, well, the meshing of these two gears together must be, well, clearly it's extremely precise. Or the factory service manual actually assumes when you're putting this gear case in that the pinion is already installed. I believe that is the case. I had to loosen everything up. I had to take this bearing cap off, pull the shim back out, pull the gear, the ring gear over to this side. I was able to slip it all the way back up in there. And now, as you can see, I can turn. So. So let me tighten up the bolts on the pinion housing, put the bearing cap back on. We can continue on with our uh, bearing cap spread measurement and our backlash. And just like that, it's three days later. So 
Let's give you an update on where we are with our differential rebuild on our Coupe de Ville. Uh, pretty much, I've been fighting a big ugly bear down in a trench in a swamp for like three days. That's at least, <laughs> that's the way it feels, right? So, uh, having never rebuilt a differential before in my life, hey, you know, that's, it's a learning, it's a learning curve. I'm not, you know, that's, that's part of it. So, uh, here's the deal. Um, I reassembled everything and immediately noticed that nothing would turn. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, the differential is supposed to turn. That's like a thing, right? Well, I fought that battle for quite some time. I could not get this bearing cap to align squarely and mount squarely to the housing uh, for the life of me. And at the time, I had the pinion bolted against the housing uh, using the original shim that came with it. So I decided to uh, unbolt the pinion and let it slide out about a half an inch. And give, I, did, I just freed everything up, gave myself some working room, uh, unbolted this bearing cap, let it loose, loosened up the adjuster screw on the right-hand side. I uh, just got everything loose. Moved this whole affair over to the right-hand side such that this bearing was not touching this race. I was then able to align the shim, the race, and this bearing cap and get it square and mounted properly. And then I moved this whole affair back over this way and remounted this bearing cap and, you know, and was able to work the adjust the adjustment nut properly. I said, okay, fine. And then it's, everything spun. I'm like, cool. Okay, so then I take the pinion housing, shove it back in to where it was, bolt it down, nothing moves. I'm like, ah, okay, I get it now. So with all new bearings, and not changing any shims. This shim on the left-hand side of the differential has not been changed, nor the one on the pinion housing. Clearly, none of those shims are going to work with this new setup. And keep in mind that we have a custom-made uh, bearing spacer and a shim kit in the pinion. Now, what I've done today is I have been playing around with the pinion depth and moving, moving it in and out like this, trying to figure out uh, the best place for it and I've been painting the gears and I'll put up a picture of one of the patterns that I observed earlier today So right now What I've been doing is I've been taking uh, just plain old feeler gauges three inch, three inch long feeler gauges And I just I basically bought a couple of them at the local parts house and just took them apart and I take three of them, one here, one here, and one here, in between the pinion housing and the differential case. And right now, and I've been, I tried everything up from, uh, I started at six thou, and it went by twos. Right now, I'm at 25,000, right? So I'm not sure if that's going to be the end game or not, but the pinion is 25,000 out that way more than it used to be. However, I just got through checking my backlash. I had my my dial indicator up here on this tooth. You put it at a 90 degree angle. I had it magnetized right here. And I, <laughs> the, uh, the backlash uh, setting is five to 10 thousandths. Right now I'm at two. <laughs> so what does that mean? Uh, that means the ring gear is too far over that way. Okay, uh, it needs to come back this way. And I, the shim that's in here, I have one, right? The one that came on the car. So what are you going to do? However, I was able to find some shims online. I actually have a six thou shim for the pinion housing, uh, but that's it's not going to do me a whole lot of good. I've got to have a lot thicker than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on McMaster car and they actually sell stainless steel shim stock. So what I'm going to end up doing is manufacturing my own shims for this housing back here, this pinion housing. Uh, on the left-hand side over here on the on the uh, carrier, I found some new old stock shims. I found three of them on eBay. Maybe taking this one into consideration and using those other three and trying them. I, I don't know what the width of this one is. The, the other ones that I have coming in may be thicker. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I'll have to measure. I just wanted to get some in here to play with, right? Because if I need to bring this carrier gear over this way, then the shim has got to be thinner. Now I could take this shim, shave it down, play around with it, shave it down a thousandth of a at a time, right? Uh, and if I mess it up, I got a couple more coming in from eBay and you know, I could use one of them and continue on. Alternatively, there are some 
round shim stock uh, available on McMaster car. And they have a four inch and you can get it in various thicknesses. And all you'd have to do is cut a pattern out using this one. And then the center wouldn't have to be that crucial. It just can't touch the axle shaft, really. It's not a precise thing. The only thing is precise is this way, you know, so. And the OD needs to match the, uh, the shim that's in here. And I can do that with 10 snips. And once it's compressed, it should be fine. So I have a way to manufacture shims for the pinion housing and for the carrier itself. Now, one, one last thing I wanted to add about this differential from Cadillac from the early 70s and, and the popularity of the Ford 9-inch rear end. I'm just using that as an example, right? So with a Ford 9-inch, you're going to have an adjuster nut over here and one over here. So if you need to adjust your backlash, all you have to do is grab your little tool, one of these, all right? If you want to move the ring gear this way, loosen a little bit, tighten a little bit, you're done. Easy. And if you want to move the ring gear this way, loosen it over here, tighten it over here, you're done. Not with this one. You've got one over here and you've got a shim. So the entire backlash setting for this carrier ring gear is adjusted with this one shim. So a thinner shim will bring the ring gear this way, a thicker shim will bring it that way, and that's how you adjust your backlash. And you're gonna use your adjuster nut to set your side bearing preload. And the side bearing preload is established, as you saw in the earlier video, uh, you put a dial indicator between these two bearing caps, and you once you tighten this adjuster nut, these two bearing caps should spread apart by three to four thousandths. That's how you know you've got the right uh, bearing preload. And you can see one of the feeler gauges that I have stuck in there right now. That's the 25 thousandths. That's the update. I've spent the last three days trying to figure this thing out. With this new configuration, the pinion depth was just off the chain. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was so deep into the differential that nothing would work. And I was dumbfounded. I'm like, what kind of voodoo is going on here? So anyway, uh, that's kind of a long-winded answer for an update. But that's where we are. I'm currently waiting on parts to come in from eBay. And I'm going to take this thing out of here and I'm going to experiment with trimming down this shim to see what I can do with this backlash because clearly it is way, way too tight. All right, folks, that's all for now. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. Do me a favor. It really helps out the channel a whole lot. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy driving, maintaining, and restoring your classic Cadillac.